I thought I'd uh, share my current project uh, with you. I'm finally finishing it up uh, and I'll uh, show you my experiment here in uh, DIY enclosures for radio uh, projects. I learned a lot and uh, you might want to give uh, my method a try uh, yourself. This is uh, my version of, uh, of a flying pig rig. Uh, it's a uh, single uh, single frequency uh, rock bound uh, on 30 uh, or 7030.7 megahertz uh, and it was uh, a kit produced by uh, W8DIZ otherwise known as Diz from uh, kitsandparts.com and uh, let me just show you close up here I get used to this camera close up of the uh, board it's a nice uh, nice board it's part of the kit I don't think the kits available anymore but uh, Diz always does uh, really great uh, stuff and I uh, haven't tried it out yet because I'm just getting it finished here but uh, there's a club that uh, includes several hundred if not uh, thousands of members of people who have built these uh, pig rigs you can check that out on uh, online I'll put a link down below uh, so you can do that but what I'm really interested in uh, showing you here is the uh, enclosure that uh, I built for it and uh, sort of a uh, an experiment in putting together something that was sturdy and uh, would uh, would look uh, decent and would be uh, well uh, cheap uh, to be <clears throat> honest with you and you see that I've made it out of uh, PC board material mostly uh, and as you will find in uh, many other uh, places uh, the the uh, joints uh, have been soldered here. You, I, you probably can't really see that very well. Uh, soldered together just to hold those pieces in place. But the larger pieces are held together. Let me show you the, the top here. Held together by uh, aluminum L uh, angle or uh, L section uh, stock similar to this uh, piece I've got here I picked this up from uh, I think it was I think it was Lowe's you can find this in uh, Lowe's Home Depot any any kind of hardware store will have a selection of this kind of this kind of thing and uh, I used it to uh, to attach the printed circuit board panels to and uh, this is the top on the on the base here I experimented with using pop rivets to hold uh, the uh, the larger pieces uh, or the side pieces on on the larger flange of the the L bracket it has a has a larger flange on the thinner or the narrower flange as you see here in the uh, in the lid I've uh, I've just glued that in with uh, I think I, I think I use super glue or ACC glue or AC it goes by different I use a gap filling uh, type and I don't think I would do that again or if I did that again I would supplement it even on these narrower uh, sections here with uh, pop rivets because I've had one of these come apart on me and I don't think I'll rely on glue I used uh, uh, glue also in the same way down on the bottom of the main enclosure uh, here instead of the rivets that I used and I think I'm, I'm not a, a huge fan of pop rivets they uh, they leave sort of a large things sticking up you know sticking out in the in the box and uh, that might be that might it, it hasn't gotten in the way I just don't like it and and for the top I'm relying on uh, self-tapping uh, metal screws 
to uh, to hold uh, to hold it together, and I think the same method could probably then just be used down here as well instead of the the pop rivets. Uh, one of the uh, problems that I encountered was uh, with this uh, L section uh, stock. Get a good, try to get a good end shot here. Uh, it's not exactly or not precisely uh, 90 degrees. It's a little short of 90 degrees. And so when you when I assembled the, the box together here, I, uh, I found, especially when putting the, the lid on the top, that there is a certain amount of, uh, of bowing as the, as the bracket material has sort of uh, bent or, or warped the PC board material here. Uh, and it, uh, it looks okay. Uh, and this this stuff's pretty cheap, but uh, it may be that there are different brands of, of this channel material that uh, that are a little bit bit closer to 90 uh, 90 degrees. Uh, I've chosen to to uh, lay this uh, enclosure out for the pig rig, just a little different than than uh, some have done. Uh, on the front panel, I I added an indicator light so that. When you turn it on, I don't, I don't have any power to it, so the light doesn't come on now. But when you when you turn it on with the volume control, you hear the clicking there uh, that the light comes on, and that's just to obviously indicate that it's turned on. Uh, and this is uh, is the headphone jack, uh, or or the jack to uh, send off to uh, you know PC speakers or or, what, or whatever. On the back, I've put the jack for uh, the stereo uh, jack for the uh, paddle, and of course the uh, BNC connector for uh, the antenna. Uh, I decided to use a BNC connector instead of a, a regular uh, PL259 so-called UHF connector. Uh, just because it's it's a small size here, it it, it might have worked well. I, it's just it's just a matter of choice, and I have lots of adapters anyway. And then I've got an Anderson power pole pair here that I've just uh, I've just glued. You can see that glued into place uh, for for power with a a choke coil to try to clean that power up a little bit uh, and then uh, for programming the the built-in keyer it comes uh, uh, with a uh, with a microprocessor for uh, keying you can set the keyer up in various ways with and uh, some of the other versions put the keyer programming button on the front I decided to put it on the back and I uh, I just use hot glue to uh, to put a little one of those tactile switches that you find on circuit or uh, computer boards or or just these little ones they're, they're usually PC mounted and I just drilled a little hole uh, just enough to clear and it doesn't stick out very far I see if I can you can see how how low the profile is of that of that button and uh, I just resorted to, uh, uh, if I can get this to, to show uh, properly, resorted to uh, a big blob of hot glue there and uh, held, held the, the button in place, the, the housing of the, of the button in place uh, until it got cool enough that, uh, so I could try to center the little the little button in the in the hole but this this is not coming out of there and it's uh, it's not moving no matter really how hard I press on that so it's it's good and solid enough to you know classic sort of uh, DIY um, you know home craft kind of uh, kind of work and uh, 
and I just use regular hand drills for everything else that you that you uh, that you see here. Uh, and uh, I think next time uh, I was I was a little cheap, and I decided that I had I had some standoffs that were th uh, you know female thread on both hands, but I had some that had no threads. That, that were a lot cheaper and I just got cheap and I decided well I'll use those but then that meant I had to use a just a screw and and a nut on the back and I don't know that's it's going to be down you know flat and there's going to be little rubber little rubber bumpers on the corners here so those won't show but I I think I'll probably just spring for or use some of my uh, threaded standoffs uh, uh, next time uh, I'll show you uh, by the way uh, in a future video how to make your own uh, standoffs uh, threaded or, or otherwise out of some really cheap materials but anyway so that's uh, that's the enclosure and and in order to, to maintain uh, ground uh, contact here I'm, uh, I've got this this heavy uh, 12 gauge wire soldered to the top and then this will go on the inside and uh, solder in here and then this will you know they'll be attached and then and then I can put that on top and, uh, and then just uh, I've already pre-drilled here and, uh, and just screw the screw it down and I've got this nice little package it's pretty sturdy um, it's not it's not gonna go anywhere uh, and it's not all that heavy uh, I think if I were gonna pack this thing up a mountain for soda act activations I would probably you know make it make a lighter version uh, this is uh, probably more suited to uh, throwing in a, in a suitcase for a vacation use than than putting in a backpack, but it's it's really not that <clears throat> really not that bad. And uh, well, here are some lessons that I uh, that I learned uh, on this. Uh, the first one I've already mentioned. Uh, I wouldn't rely on on just glue to hold uh, the PC board material panels together with with uh, the uh, bracket or the uh, uh, what do you call that stuff? L section aluminum. Uh, as I did here, uh, either uh, uh, pop rivet those or screw them screw them down. Uh, I'm not I'm not against glue, uh, but of course uh, it would be better, I suppose, uh, for uh, electrical continuity continuity of the ground a little bit easier to maintain with no glue in there at all and just put the Put the uh, aluminum against the uh, the copper cladding of the of the board material. So I don't think I would. Uh, and I think uh, one other lesson is that I would look for a little bit better uh, uh, channel. I'm trying to figure out the logic of where to point that. I'm I'm not used to doing that. It's like doing it in a mirror. Uh, oh, there we go. Uh, a little bit, a little bit truer, 90 degree angle there. I suppose there might be some way of, of tapping that out on some fixture in advance, but I, that's too much. That's too much work for me. So, uh, and uh, I think uh, that uh, I would cut the bottom, the bottom panel, a little bit shorter than the top panel. Because the way I've attached these these uh, end pieces here, I don't know if you can if you can see this, but get that thing to focus. Uh, there it goes. But the you can see the top edge of the end pieces, and I think if I made the bottom panel a little shorter, uh, then uh, the top would overhang those. Uh, you uh, notice that on the front panel, I did make the end panel uh, hang down all the way to the flush with the channels uh, or the uh, aluminum uh, uh, pieces on the bottom. 
but uh, next time I think I would also do that on the top because you see that it that the that this end panel doesn't come up and cover that uh, that edge there that's these are just minor points but uh, the other thing that I don't think I'll do next time is use this uh, hammer finish spray uh, paint it's uh, it's rust-oleum and uh, it's actually a nice color it's sort of a sort of a brownish black color I, I kind of like the color but uh, it uh, what, what at least I have to do is to practice uh, spraying the stuff because it, it it has something in it it's almost like it almost is like a, a wax or something so that when you spray it it creates these little maybe you can kind of partially see that that texture there that sort of hammered look that that used to be very popular on on radio gear and, and other kinds of other kinds of uh, gear and it's easy to uh, to get that uneven so I need to practice if I'm going to use this stuff again uh, I need to practice doing that uh, and I'm not at all fond of, of a glossy finish it shows fingerprints and smudges too much uh, so uh, <clears throat> I'm actually going to in a future video uh, show some experiments with powder coating at uh, at home it's not as uh, as tough as uh, you, as you might think and all of these pieces could be uh, could be powder coated uh, they can stand the heat of the of the baking process without any trouble and uh, so look look ahead uh, for a, a video some future point on on uh, DIY uh, powder coating of your uh, ham radio uh, project enclosures.